it's a movie where you sort of have to collect yourself afterwards, and I think that's what we're going to do in this conversation. We're going to talk about the movie, but we're going to talk about what the movie's about. And it's my pleasure to bring up those who made it and those who will allow us to go a little bit deeper into the subject. But I'm going to start with writer-director Florian Zeller. We have two of our actors. Laura Dern and Vanessa Kirby. Cinematographer Ben Smithard is here with us. Producer Joanna Laurie. And from the National Alliance on Mental Health, Dan Gillison. I'm going to start with the film, but I think we're going to, it's not going to take us long to get into some pretty deep stuff. Uh, Florian, you also made The Father. I'm assuming a lot of people in this room have probably seen and been devastated by that film as well. Uh, but you've written a dozen plays in French, and this is part of a trilogy, The Mother, The Father, The Son. Why was, of all of the work you've done before or an original project, why was The Son the film you had to do next? The Sun was a play that I wrote five years ago, and um, I guess when I wrote it, it was coming from a personal place, trying to share emotions, uh, to share experiences that I was familiar with. And what happened is that when the play was on stage, it was in Paris, I was really surprised and moved to, to see the response of the audience meaning that people were waiting for us after every performance to share their own story, to tell their own story, as if it was a way to say, you know, I know what you're talking about, because my uncle, because my nephew, because my daughter, etc., etc. And I was really um, shocked to realize that so many people somehow are connected to this issue, so many people as parents know what it means to be in a position where you do not know what to do anymore, you know, to experience powerlessness. And there are so many people in pain. And I also felt that there are so many people, there is so much uh, ignorance, I would say, so much pain, but also so much denial, shame, and guilt around these issues that I really wanted to open a conversation. And I thought that to make a film was the best way to open that conversation. I don't want to pry, but I mean, this is an issue that touches all of us. Is there a personal connection to you in your family, in your circle to this issue? Um, yes, there is. It doesn't, I mean, it's not in terms of situations or characters, but in terms of emotions. And actually the, the film is dedicated to my son. And it took me a few, weeks to decide if it was a good dedication or not. I didn't know if it was right to do that. But my point is that what I feel is that we need to talk about this issue. We need to not to shy away from this issue. So I felt maybe I should be the first to do that and not to shy away from it because I think there is no shame. that it should be no shame around those topics. It's. Uh it's strange, it's, it's a taboo in culture to be able to talk about suicide to some extent. It's, uh, in film, it's so, op so often a device. You see it as something that's meant like for melodrama to sort of wrench an audience. But to kind of confront it head on as you do, I, I mean, I feel like it takes a courage, but it also it takes, it takes a lot out of the audience too. It's not something we, we've been trained, I think, to, to be hit with as hard as you do here. And that, is obviously something you had to think about. If you're going to look at this, it can't be just to make audiences cry, it has to be to make them confront the issue. Yeah, and I profoundly believe that tragedy is preventable. This is a tragedy, and, um, but I do think that suicide is preventable, that the whole thing, and I think for that we need to, to have conversations, to know more, to use the right words, and that's why I really wanted to, to portray this family and this father, who is a loving father, a caring father, but somehow he doesn't know how to help uh, 
his son. You know, he doesn't know how to open the right doors. He doesn't have the keys. And that's the whole thing. I could ask you why you cast Laura Dern and Vanessa Kirby, but I think we've all just seen the movie. Thank God we're having this conversation after seeing the movie. I don't think you can talk about this movie without having seen it. But, I mean, the Laura Dern, Vanessa Kirby, two of the most amazing actresses we have, you are, and you're both at kind of peaks in your career, I feel like are, you're, you just keep going up and up. You get to choose what you work on. Why did you two have to work on this project? It's not like material like this comes around every day. Uh, Laura, let's start with you, and Vanessa, if you would answer the same. Uh, well, starting with having seen the father uh, and being so profoundly moved by Florian as a playwright, screenwriter and filmmaker, uh, and then the gift of reading this flawless screenplay. Uh, all of us know this story in some way, as you said, and when I received the script, we were in the middle of the pandemic, and everywhere we looked, uh, even within our family and friends, we were hearing about the global epidemic of mental health that was skyrocketing in its numbers, particularly in adolescents and young adults. So I felt so beyond privileged to be given the opportunity to be part of this and to play the mother as a mother who knows what it is to love with every cell um, and also feel powerless um, at moments when we don't get to control um, how our child feels as much as we long to have the answers. So with all of that, it's one of the great gifts of my life to work with this amazing artist. Vanessa, I'd love to hear your response to the screenplay or if you'd seen the play to the, the subject. What was it that drew you to working on this? Um, yeah, like Laura, I loved The Father so much. It was one of my favorite films from the last many years. And I just loved Florian's daring to lean into things that, I say this to him all the time, but to lean into things that are uncomfortable, unpalatable, challenging to watch, and yet mm, pain and, and grief and profound difficulty is just as much as part of life. And I think so often we try to stay comfortable as much as possible. And so when we get into discomfort, it's incredibly, can feel isolating or lonely or particularly scary. And so I've always been drawn to cinema that leans into those dark corners and is uncompromising in looking at it. Because I, I think even if one person recognizes something in that experience that they may have just gone through, be in or about to go through, for me that's, Oh, that's just an amazing um, uh, gift. I've certainly found that in my life. So I, I just love the way Florian wanted to bravely go there with things that um, are not necessarily uh, the easiest or the safest avenues. I mean, not to make light of anything, but there are getting to play opposite Hugh Jackman is, you know, in, in, in a, a role like this too, is you know, not too shabby. <laughs> but uh, he's not here, he's been, he's got an incredibly busy fall with The Music Man uh, on Broadway. But uh, the, uh, could you talk about, this is outside of the realm of, that's a really, I think, surprising casting choice. In a way, it's stripping away a lot of the, the charisma, the things of, of Hugh and showing a vulnerability. Did, did you have him in mind? Did he lobby you? How did it work out that uh, you cast him? No, to be honest, I didn't have him in mind when I wrote the script. And I was just at the beginning of the process of dreaming about who could be in that story when I received a letter from him. He heard that I was working on this adaptation. He knew the play and he said, I mean, he wrote, um, if you're already in a conversation with someone, please forgive my letter. But if you're not, I would love to have 10 minutes with you just to let you know why I should be the one to, to play this part. And of course, I was uh, surprised. I was not expecting this uh, kind of letter, but also very impressed and moved by 
you know, his honesty, his courage, and his um, hum humility, I would say. And so we met, and it was on Zoom at the time, and I was not planning to make any decision. It was just a, a regular meeting. And after a few minutes of that conversation, I stopped the conversation, and I offered him the part, not because of something that he said, but because of what I felt about who he is, where he was in his life at that moment, and I felt strongly that he was available to explore these emotions without shying away, and that he was deep down very connected um, as a man, as a father, as a son, also as an actor, to what I was trying to do. And um, I have been very impressed by what he did you know, during this journey, the commitment, the generosity, and yeah, the deep, courage that he had to to go there. Dan, all the, Dan Gillison, all the way at the other end there, you know, sort of what I was feeling about the way that if you're going to talk about suicide, there's a responsibility that comes with that. You know, the would you like to elaborate at all upon the way that um, the way that this movie deals with it uh, and uh, and just how how we should be going about it in a way behind that question is kind of like, what should the characters have done, you know, different, differently from what they do do? Well, thank you very much. I think the first thing that I want to say is uh, all, everyone up here has choices, and the choice to do this work on behalf of Adami, I want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. Um, to Sony Pictures Classic and AFI, thank you very much. This is a very important um, conversation, a very important topic, and we need to demystify mental illness and we need to reduce the stigma. In terms of your question, there's no conclusive answer, but I would tell you that one of the tenets is early intervention. The earlier that you can identify an individual that's navigating mental illness and you can get them help, the, the, the further along upstream you are before you get to that end point. There's no conclusive answer to say that the parents did the wrong thing. They led with love and there was science there. So there's, there's the thought that they should have left the son, and there's the thought that they did the right thing in bringing the son home. The, the opportunity is the early intervention further up front. I would say that this film right here is critically important. It's extremely authentic in terms of its portrayal, and we see it every day in the work that we do. And the bigger part of it for us is that as we looked at, at Laura's role, we, we're an organization that was started by mothers who were advocating for their sons. And that's what she was doing, and she was in so much pain at the very beginning, that, and she was in isolation. She didn't have anyone else to talk to about her pain. And, and that's a part of this too, is the pain that Nicholas was feeling and the pain that the mother was feeling, they both needed a support group, and that's something that NAMI provides. Laura, you always portray things with such empathy. That you always portray things with such empathy. I love, it. I love the way you describe this character as someone who loves her son with every cell, because I think we feel that, and part of what's devastating is not knowing what to do. I mean, early on in that first scene when you say, he scares me, and we don't yet know why. There's a, there's a dread that permeates this film, and this, it, there are any number of, it's, it's a story being told, so we know it's going in a direction of, towards something, but it could have been a school shooting, it could have been what Vanessa's character, Beth, is that right? Uh, you know, feels like, I don't trust him with my own son, all these things, but, um, the, uh, but the characters aren't perfect and they don't make all the perfect choices. I'm curious what, uh, maybe this is unfair, but like, what would you do, what would you do differently to, what would you ask the characters to do differently if you could control them as opposed to just embodying them? Uh, I, I sit here as a mother with no answers, right? I just, the longing to get it right. What's so profound in the writing is how Hugh is also the son and he's carrying the wounds and the shame of his own story and is parenting and leading with the longing to not be his father, which 
at times can be a positive and can at times be blinding to so many of us. And I think in the, in the case of our characters as well, there's, you know, the unspoken as you speak so beautifully to. What is unspoken because of shame is so much of the tragedy in families. And in the case of this mother, I think she was hoping that somehow if it was her fault, if she was the one that got it all wrong, that somehow she had control over it all, that she could take the blame and then he would be okay. But you don't get to fix it in that way. And as you said, early intervention would have been the goal, but sometimes we don't see outside ourselves and our own fear. And the way Florian and Christopher Hampton and their adaptation work together to make sure that each of us had the complication of not only clouding, but flooding the spaces with our own grief, guilt, shame, confusion, to even be able to see a mental health crisis in the room with us is, is so heartbreaking and feels so realistic from what we've learned. And I just wanna add that the shots that our cinematographer Ben in orchestrating with Florian are just as they did on the father are so, they're intimate and almost assaulting at times because you're so stuck in the pain of these characters. It's, uh, I think it, the filmmaking speaks so beautifully to the pain of each character when you're in it. Ben and uh, Florian, would you speak for a moment just about the kind of visual design of this film? You had written this material for the stage, but you've also transformed it. You'd worked together on The Father, and The Father has this incredible trick, you know, where things are, th things are playing games with your head, and you, you know, are sort of like put in the position of someone with dementia in a way that I don't think we've ever experienced before in a film. This has a very different design, and I found myself wondering having seen The Father, you know, the way everything is stripped down to almost monochrome, black and white and a lot of grays. You know, I've never seen a gray nursery in my life, but this movie has, has one, you know. But that's all conscious, it's very deliberate. Ben, would you talk about a little bit that collaboration of, this is not repeating what you did on The Father at all. What were some of the key considerations in terms of uh, approaching it? Uh, it was quite a tough shoot, actually. Um, it was a hard film to make, and, I, and I, think I, I think it was a hard film for a lot of people, even though we're all fairly experienced in making films. I mean, The Father was hard, but uh, this, this was tough, and I just felt a lot of the time I was going home with a met metaphorical black cloud over my head, and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm just a cinematographer. Uh, that's why I kind of love actors, because they really have to stand out there and tell this story. Um, but in answer to your question, Peter, I'm sorry, I, I digressed. Um, it's, it's, a, it's very different from The Father, but also very similar. We went through it in very, very fine detail, um, like we did with The Father. And in weeks and weeks before we got anywhere near the set, we went through it in, in word by word, sigh by sigh, um, page by page. And um, we even acted some of the roles out ourselves. I'm just very, just very glad and grateful that I had uh, Florian to guide me through it. Do, do you want to quickly just elaborate on... No, but it's true that elaborate. the two stories are completely different, as you said, because in The Father, the strategy was to put the audience in the main character's head somehow and to feel from the inside, like a subjective experience, what it could mean to lose your own bearings, and like to experience a slice of dementia. And here, the strategy was completely different, and every story requires something different. Uh, we could have told that story from, you know, this young adolescent's perspective, but what I really wanted for the audience to experience was, you know, this position when you are experiencing, you know, this powerlessness, when you feel important, when you do not know what to do anymore. So I really wanted to, to find something more linear, more straightforward, because it was a way to reflect also what I wanted to tell, you know, which is to, to face this issue, to face that pain without shying away, even though I knew it would be like challenging for all of us, for all of you, but also because I think, I thought that it was really what matters. Um, and I think there is like a, something cathartic, strangely about it, meaning that, you know, 
when we, you are going through a difficult period of, in your own life, you feel always like you're alone. And I think that's what heart could provide, you know, the feeling that you are part of something bigger than yourself. You are, you know, part of, we are all in the same boat, you know, with the same fears. And the boat is humanity. And I think that this is what we can experience through cinema. And I think there's here a consolation. Uh, Joanna, we only have a little bit of time left, but I want to bring you in because Seesaw has been uh, behind so many, the production company that you w work with, uh, produced The Father, produced The King's Speech, uh, I mean, the, but you have enabled Florian to tell his stories in English, which I think is going to make them internationally received, already has been. Do you want to just speak a little bit about uh, what that collabor collaboration has been like? It brought in Christopher Hampton, you know, is a, a, to, to sort of work in this sure. shoot. Um, I would love to take credit for The Father, but I can't. That was another producer. Uh, but Seesaw has made, yes, a, a vast array of movies. Um, the Power of the Dog, Shame, King's Speech, Lion. Um, my producing partners, Emil and Ian, uh, aren't here tonight, but we um, coalesce around amazing filmmakers. And so when we saw The Father, it was so clear that we had to make Florian's film and we just wanted to support him. Um, and of course, like us, this amazing, incredible cast and team of people came around him. Um, and this was much more of a linear story. You know, the father was a kind of complex maze where you were constantly confused, like Anthony's character was. But this was very powerfully straight emotion. Um, and I think that's why we're all here as storytellers, as film watchers. We want to be transported, and that's why we hope um, this story captures people's hearts. And also, if there's something that you take away, more is the better, because as we know, as Dan's just articulated, it's a, it's a you know, post-pandemic especially, it's tough. And uh, we hope that people feel seen when they watch this film and that that we've made something that connects with them. Uh, and Florian has an amazing special gift for that, and I think that he will carry on making many films that do this. Uh, it, it's such a hard, you'll find this when you leave the room tonight, it's such a hard film to talk to others about until they've seen it, but such an important film to talk about once you've seen it. And I hope that this is just the beginning of a conversation that you'll all take in your own directions, because it touches us all personally in different ways. You almost can't put that thing up in front of the film that we sometimes see on Netflix or, or, or Apple TV where it says, you know, a trigger warning or a research, but that's important. And Dan, I'm gonna give you the last word if you could just tell us as resources, if anyone recognizes something in this of themselves or someone that they know, where they can go next. Uh, thank you, yeah, thank you. The first thing is NAMI.org is the first place you can go. The other thing is that if you have Siri on your phone, we would suggest that you just push the button and say, I'm feeling depressed, and what will happen is a message will come up that will uh, help. Um, so that's two things. The third thing is that we just um, uh, published this book, You Are Not Alone, The NAMI Guide to Navigating Mental Health. Uh, this is about navigating the space, and the last thing I'll say is that, uh, Florian, thank you uh, for what you've done in the creativity and the vision to this work. It is so real, including uh, to, from a cinematography standpoint, if you look at some of the scenes in workplace mental health as the, as the sign behind the psychiatrist, that cost, uh, presenteeism costs the United States over a billion dollars a year. Presenteeism is when we go to work, we're there physically, we're not there mentally. We saw Hugh with that role, we saw uh, Laura with that role in terms of they were thinking about their son while they were at work. They were physically at work, they weren't there. The last thing is that NAMI is all about trying to help individuals and families living with mental illness and navigating mental health. And if each one of you all would tell someone else about this movie, it would help us so very much in demystifying mental health and increasing the knowledge of uh, how important mental health is because there is no physical health without mental health. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.